Being a certified speaker, coach, and trainer from the John Maxwell team means that he is part of a team of elite coaches, teachers, speakers, and professionals taking leadership training, talent, skills, and adding value to people all over the world. Everything rises and falls on leadership. speaking I'm listening thank you thank you thank you talking about this abundant Harish Mehta what ah. is the secret behind this this why not anything at why why not energetic Harish Mehta why not passionate why not something else you know why only abundant Harish Mehta I am so blessed that on the 22nd of March 2020 when our Prime Minister announced that red letter day is still here here from tomorrow we are on curfew or I did a session the truth is leaders who want to create future leaders remember the word Leaders who want to create future leaders are working hard on the current set of leadership. And leaders today need to invest their time and the energy to build the organization. We call it culture. Since we bring industry experts, entrepreneurs and the people, those who have gone through really struggle time and a lot of inspiration you can get from this show and the talk what these people are doing on Let's Talk Show. Hello friends, welcome to the 19th episode of the Let's Talk Show. Today's guest is very special. We have a coach, a mentor and an amazing motivational speaker he is none other than Abundant Harish Mehta. Uh, one, two, three, on. Um, Hari sir, thank you so much for joining for Let's Talk Show podcast. And uh, the important thing is, um, I am really inspired. Uh, your name is really, you, the way you are writing your name is Abundant uh, Harish Mehta. So uh, you are a coach. Uh, you, you inspire so many people across the industry, across the various nations. So uh, kindly give us the brief about your journey, sir. The journey is in four books, but I'll summarize it and share with you in the next 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, because I have been speaking about my journey at various forums, students, teachers, business owners, business leaders, uh, CHROs, and people who want to learn and develop teams and grow them. So let's start the journey. I was born in 1958. Uh, my father was working in Calcutta and my mother delivered me in Delhi and went back to Calcutta and grew me for the first 12 years. 58 to 70, I was in Calcutta. I was in class 7th when we moved to Delhi. Some people do not know. Many people would not know. The Communist Party of India wanted people to close businesses and shift to other locations when Mr. Jyoti Basu came in. So my father was working with Thapars and he was asked to move to Delhi, where Thapar shifted their head office. Many companies moved from Kolkata to Bombay or to Delhi. So, privileged to move, and I was in class 7, and joined again back to school in 7th in Delhi. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. In our time, it was All India Higher Secondary. So 11th was the 
Now, of course, it is 10 plus 2. Incidentally, I stood fifth in All India in the merit list. I was there in school in commerce section. And I was very proud to say that I stood fifth in the merit list amongst a couple of lakh students in that time. I used to play cricket. I used to play cricket for Delhi, for thereafter Delhi University, and was looking forward to play the Ranji Trophy or the Junior Ranji Trophy that time under 22. Luck favors everybody. My father was watching this and he knew that this boy is focused only on playing. I want to mention here, I was invited to join Shriram College of Commerce, St. Stephen's or Hindu, the three major colleges in Delhi University. And my father influenced me. He said, I am from Shriram, you have to join Shriram College. I was focusing on Stephens or Hindu because they had a good cricket team. The likes of Piyush Pandey, Arun Lal, those times, Kirti Azad, those to play for Delhi by being a part of the Delhi University team. So he prevailed upon me and I joined Shriram College. And the best college in commerce even today. Admissions are only at 99.9%. And there were very few people, 300 or 350 people, batch size in commerce and in economics. So, 1,000 people in the college. And I am happy to share here, you know, and confess. I did not attend college. I was attending college through the gates and going to the ground. I used to pass the classrooms and the cafeteria and going to the ground. Either play volleyball or cricket practice or table tennis or badminton. Incidentally, I represented in all four for the college and the university. So you can imagine. I appeared for first year, just managed to get 40%. Second year and third year. And finally, since it was less than 50%, they gave me a degree BCom pass, not an honor certificate, which I had joined for. Yeah. So my father, he told my mother, and he's listening, he's no more here. He passed away three years back. My mother is listening. She's 90 years old. And my father, I see him in picture and he's listening to me from there, showering his blessings on me. Yeah. He told my mother, this boy is going to become nothing. And I want him to pick up a job. And since he was influential, I'm confessing all this today. He was influential. You can imagine what he did. He got me an appointment letter for a bank. And he said, pack your son off to Kolkata. Mm -hmm. So I got this letter in 78. And, and 1st of January, I boarded the train for Calcutta. My uncle, my mama, he received me. He said, 2nd of January, West Indies is playing India. I've got two tickets for the pavilion. Yeah. Why don't you join me? I literally tore those tickets. I was determined to prove to my father. And I'm confessing this in front of you that I am good at what I put my mind on. Why? Because when I joined the bank in the first 15 months, I learned everything as an officer training. Mind you, a man with no resume, mm -hmm. a man joined as an officer, 
and he learned from receiving the dark till appraising loans in a regional office. Yeah. And then I told my father that I'm done. I need to go to a branch. So he, again, because of influence, he moved me from New Bank of India to Oriental Bank. Mm. And he put me in the largest branch of the bank in India at Bombay. Bombay Fort Branch, Oriental Bank, I joined on the 21st of April, 1980. And that was the beginning of the leader in me. Today, I humbly say I'm 43 years in the business of leadership. I learned young and more so because I joined directly as an officer. Yeah. So the three years, five years of from a clerk to a supervisor, I think I graduated straight away. And today as I speak, this business of coaching, teaching, I have graduated with the best in the world. More of that later. So I joined and learned in the first two years everything in the branch of a largest branch of a bank. Again, I told my father that I have done everything. I need to do loans and foreign exchange. Routine I have mastered. Yeah. So they said, again, there were two special people working on that in the branch. So I could not ask them to shift. So they shifted me to head office in Delhi. Mm. And I did a management development program, just me in the batch, one man batch. Management development program, six months in head office and six months in regional office of Delhi. So while this was happening, this was 82. I moved in May of 82. And 83, while I was doing this program, the regional head of Bombay, he was passing through head office and he saw me sitting there. He's a great man, I love him. And he's the owner and proprietor of building me, Mr. Gupta. So he said, Harish, what are you doing here? You are in the back office, pushing files, passing loans. Hmm. This is not your job. You are a front man. You are a speaker. You are a communicator. You got to come and be at the branch, leading the branch. Yeah. On the 10th of October, he spoke about this, 80, 83. He said, I'm opening a new branch in Bombay. On the 25th of November, 1983. So he said, come and open the branch. I'll give you an opportunity. Since you have not completed three years, hmm. officiating manager. Look at the way, how, when you knock a door and it opens, yeah. and you get into the door and say, I am here, give me what you have. I'm very bold today, see? My oratory has improved by miles. And as I speak, my doors open. I opened the branch in a suburb, which is today one of the very populated one, Malad. Mid Chalky is the place, 25th of November, 1983. And Shri Kapoor opened the branch. So silver spoon, gold spoon, all the spoons with me. And to top it all, I opened the branch with one crore on day one. 83, one crore was big amount. I was struggling at 7 p.m. at 99 lakhs. And my cashier told me, sir, we are one shot of the century. I said, beta, give me half an hour. So I went to a friend of mine, 
in Santa Cruz. Cut piece store, a very known person. I said, whatever his name is, I don't want to. I said, give me two lakhs for a day. Hmm. So he gave me. I brought it and put it in the bank. It was 101. The rest is history today. I opened the branch with Sunday open in a remote location, in a, accepting electricity bills. And incidentally, yesterday I was there, 40 years today. The whole place has grown like massive. So when the intentions are good, even that man upstairs comes down and helps you. That was the starting of a journey of a leader. And then step by step, I was promoted from officiating to regular, regular to scale two, scale three, scale four. Always my name was at the last. And finally, a straightforward man was caught. You know, when you keep going, you get caught. Yeah. I was leading the largest branch of the bank at stock exchange. And I was just opening that. I was opening batsmen, two opening batsmen I did, 95 and 83. In between, I went for two years for a rural posting to Solon. That's a great story. I created a massive friendship with bankers in Solon, a small district in Himachal, and enjoyed those two years because it was mandatory in a nationalized bank to do the semi-urban and rural posting. Mm -hmm. I did that. Thereafter, came back. I had to move somebody who was a branch manager. So they gave me two months to open Pawai, Hiranandani, Vasai, Kandivili. I was opening batsmen, so I knew the tricks of how to open the innings and yeah. score those first, in those first six overs, score those 80 runs or 70 runs. Yeah. Uh, sir, the journey, so... Uh, this always happens when you remember, you know, the past days, the goosebumps comes and you actually relive those moments, you know, the way you're sharing about your parents, your father, and the contribution of Mr. Gupta into the life, who really recognized the leader in you, That's and right. who actually pulled you from the entire this crowd of other people. And it's important for, you know, uh, a talent also to be recognized by someone so that a talent will definitely going to come up. So thank you so much for this very interesting. I would work. like to mention here. Yeah. The talent will be visible provided you are proud of your heritage. I don't have a story of coming from the slums. Yeah. I have a story from raising my bar from a well-educated family. My mother was teaching in school for 40 years, Balvarti Air Force. My father was heading the finance department of a very big organization, Thapats. So proud to lift that, than to enjoy and sleep. That is the message I want to give to the young people. You have got a good learning, not to top it all. You may be a Stanford, you be whatever else, but you need to get the right connect to take it up. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, uh, Hari sir, now uh, you have seen decades, you have seen things are how fast now, now changing, you have seen the intervention of technology and now the pace of technology, pace of things which, is, which are changing across is really, is very very fast as compared to the earlier, you know, the 60s, 70s, 90s. Now what is really changing into the leadership and the leadership style globally? Do you want me to tell the truth? Yeah, please. The truth is, leaders who want to create future leaders, remember the word. Leaders who want to create future leaders are working hard on the current set of leadership. And leaders today need to invest their time and the energy to build the organization. We call it culture. I have been coaching CEOs and top 20 in organizations. Culture, heritage, 50 year old company, 100 year old company, Levi's, brands, and in India, 
देर इज अ हरी टू लीड and you need to have followers when you are leading first 5 years just like a child yeah. you need to invest in every person that you have in the organization money is coming easy today it was not easy earlier i remember as a branch head when we used to distribute 5 lakhs to 50 lakhs to 5 crore to 50 crores very few people today we talk in hundreds of crores thousands of crores you know what maturity is the one word which i want to use here yeah respect is the other word i want to use here and honesty and self belief if you are carrying this you are true to yourself mm. and every word you choose to speak you mean you do is leadership you don't say you go i'm coming and you are sleeping so these two types of leadership have been there true leaders have galloped and i must confess here these two years Three years I've been speaking in front of this TV camera and asking leaders to rise, asking leaders to first lead at home, look mm-hmm. after their parents, their children, their wife, their relations, and the neighborhood, and speak to all the members of your organization. be ruthless in communication look after them when they need you those were the true leaders connect with them every hour how can i help you i must have done 900 seminars in that just awakening the leadership mm-hmm. look after the people who have made you the leader and when you look after them today those people are thriving revive and then strive to thrive was the message that i created wonderful so leaders are supposed to lead mm. not sleep so i have my two versions some other time i'll do a story on only leadership what they did in these two years go yeah. ahead um thing about this abundant harish mehta what ah. is the secret behind this this why not anything at why why not energetic harish mehta why not passionate why not something else you know why only abundant harish mehta i am so blessed that on the 22nd of march 2020 when our prime minister announced yeah. that red letter day is still here here from tomorrow we are on curfew or I did a session. Twenty third, I did a session, and first time in front of TV. This man is a speaker. He travels globally. He travels, addresses fifty, hundred, two hundred people at a time. Uh, not to motivate, but to create a message in them that they are meant for more. When I was grounded, you imagine the word grounded. Yeah. Aeroplanes have been grounded. because they could not fly harish mehta was grounded because he was traveling every second third day to a new location and speaking on leadership speaking on attracting more of what you want and less of what you don't want the law of attraction was grounded and he didn't know what to do so 24 hours it took me to understand are you down and out harish or you are going to wake up and create a new story so there were two parts scarcity mind abundant mind you see how the mindset came in a bold champion yeah. how can he be a scarcity mind so he accepted the challenge 
and came on TV in front of this Zoom. And every single day inspired people to wake up and rise. So when I moved people from scarcity to abundant, I called it reset your mindset with abundant Harish Mehta. That's how this whole thing happened. And today, I call myself the reset guy. I change the way you think. I change the way you listen. I change the way you do. You can't do what you used to do before that March 20th of 2020. Now you got to be more in less. More in less. Those two years are 20 years of growth. So yeah. that is what I spread this message. And moving a mind from poverty, scarcity, all the negative words, to creativity, joy, happiness, delight, about yeah. this is what I started teaching. Especially to leaders. Very nice, sir. Um, I remember here, uh, you are provoking a thought in the mind. It's not important what you don't have. The important is what you do with what you have. Where you focus. God has given you two eyes, one mouth, two ears, and your entire perfect body, which is doing superbly good. Is it not the abundance? So, a person who don't have one eye, you, you just go and ask the to you know take one donor for the eye. You then you will realize the price of you know everything what you have. That's so right. um, uh, one should be very, 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 very thankful always to the God, to the Almighty. We have so much to give. And you have been given so much. And the whole world has been provided for by the universe. Never say, Mujhe kya milega. Baut kuch hai lene ke liye. Aur baut kuch hai dene ke liye. Lekin agar dena sikho ge, to apne aap milta jaye. Yeah, but this, uh, this is something, you know, which is, uh, uh, it really inspires each and every one that what you are, you are waiting for, what you really expect from others, you start giving to others. Then you will see the law of attraction says you will automatically attract, you know, all those things. It is happening to me every day. Yeah. Today morning, I spoke to almost 100 children, a lady, a friend of mine in Chandigarh, 18 to 21. I give them a the power of why why do you do what you do every single minute of your life and when that why gets into you the what comes in hmm. and when the what says what do you want from the universe you start giving attention focus and energy it happens people call it a miracle I call it the new normal for me how to is the process. Yeah. That's what I teach today. How to get more of what you want and less of what you don't want. I use the law of attraction. Wonderful. It's wonderful. This, I'm telling you, this space is beautiful. Yeah. This, this reminds me that all that golden circle what Simon Sinek has really shared. Why, what, and how. You know, when your why is clear, you will get your uh, what and how. Uh, now, coming to the very important... And the how-to uh, guy comes in. <laughs> the how-to is your coach, mentor, teacher. He will yeah. take you on the journey. Yeah. So, uh, now uh, you are very, very, uh, you know, inspiring and thought-provoking, sir. Um, now, again, another uh, thing that, that you know, if you are confused, everybody is initially confused, you know, and this confusion... When you are confused, get the clarity by asking question. If I'm not asking question, asking the right question. And that possibly will help you when you have right mentor, right coach in your life. They will help you to see the and think in the into the right direction. So possibly you know that all the declutters, cluttering is really required in the life to get the right path in the direction. Now coming to the question, sir, uh, share some insights, especially what made you to come into the especially coaching. And uh, you, you have been, you know, in the coaching from last many years. And uh, what, what changes are you seeing in the lead, leaders when it comes to the leadership traits, when it comes to the urgency and emergency? Like you said that in, in India, everybody is in hurry to, to become a successful leader and all this. Yeah. 
So I want to mention two things. In life, you get what you want when you know what you want. So the first C is, do I know what I want? Personal, health, relationship, job, money, social and spiritual. So divide your what you want into these six areas. Money. How much money? Too much money? Little money? No money? Fear. Fear drops in. Do I deserve it? So this C for clarity, you need somebody to help you. And I was in a conference last week in Thailand, my global conference. We have 150 coaches from the world. So I asked them. I said, I've coined this new reset your mindset. I want people to shift their minds and focus to what they want. When you said leaders know, he needs to become the leader. Gone are those days when you say he was born a leader. Mm -hmm. To become the leader, there are traits of a leader. The famous trait is two ears and one mouth. So 75% is listening, 25% is giving. Are you a good listener? What you say is what you mean. What you mean is what you do. And what you do gets the desired results. So when you learn more, you become more. So we had a, uh, a great round table at Thailand when we were there. So we, we, we said one word today. Every business owner needs a coach. Every startup needs two. Because he has to go more in less. Yeah. And I want to share from this platform today. All those investors who want to invest in startups, make sure there's a coach on board. Independent directors will come later. But have a coach on board, whatever he has committed to the investors, he has to show that path. And a coach will mentor him, teach him, and train him to become that. So when you ask, every company needs to have a coach. And when I was attending all my programs in USA, we went to a great company. They had a coach on board 24 by 7. A mentor 24 by 7. And $500 billion companies do that. Just like you have a doctor on board. Yeah. In large organizations, you had a coach on board. So for me, it is important to emphasize here, coaching, not for the Indian cricket team, you need seven coaches head coach and all the coaches for every organization to grow multiples. Pankaj, I want to mention here, stop thinking in percentages. Gone. The new norm is twice, three times, 30 times. Sales, revenues, profits, people. The more you invest on your people, the more revenue they generate. Just like marketing, you need to invest on people. So coaching is the new buzzword. And in India, this is going to catch up just like the mobile phones have caught up. Every business, small, medium, large, and exceptionally large need to be having coaching people learning more becoming more growing more the 30x is the new norm and why i chose i wanted to give it back to the people i learned from 
especially when I met Marshall Goldsmith, I met John Maxwell, I met Les Brown. All these three great players I played in their arena for five days, four days, seven days with the world audience with me. I said, if you have to be good, you have to play with the greats. You can't be ordinary and say, I, I know, you know nothing. Because those people have invested 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, written those 30, 40, 20 books, which you read as your Bible. So coaching is important, but growing every day is more important. As LND, as CHRO, it's your responsibility. It's your ownership. Number one, you need to learn something new every day. You need to share that learning with the people you work with. And you need to create great leaders out of them by investing in them, your time, your energy, and your knowledge. Harish sir, um, um, very insightful discussion. Um, I am just t- giving it to the new direction now by asking this question. Share some loss of not having coach in an organization. Why I am so I am asking this question? The ownership of a leader is really very much important who are a decision maker in an organization, right? So there is a two type of thinking. The thinking which says that, yes, we we must have coaches, they will help us to grow, perform, changing the behavior and the patterns of the people, making them understand, understand to realize their potential. Another way, it's a cost to the company. We, we don't want to shell out money. We don't want to, you know, uh, invest in this type of thing. This, these are, they are very, very heavy affairs, very costly affairs. So share some loss of not having such practices in an organization and especially for to address the issue of those leaders, those who are still sitting and keep on suffering for many years and getting the same mindset. I have a couple of things to share here. Please. People who have a growth oriented mindset and that is between 45 to 55. They are ready to invest in people. And those who are investing between 25 to 35 are going to be great companies. I promise you. The more you delay, the more people say, I know. And their attitude shows. I also tell them, my dear MD, you know only what you know. You don't know what you don't know. Do you need to know what you don't know? Are you happy knowing what you know? So this attitude of I know has to disappear. I need to know has to come. And I need to create a great organization which is perpetual 100 years, 200 years, 300 years, not kill the organization. Hmm. Bring value, create value and create future leaders. And future leaders will come only when you give them more knowledge. Today, as I speak, it's a global arena. I have spoken one morning at New Zealand and the same day at Guyana in front of this screen. I only had to manage my sleep. So the world is a very small place today. Don't say I'm good in Madhya Pradesh or in Delhi or in Noida. You got to be great all over the world. And that requires a perspective. I talk about the six powers of the mind. The six powers of the mind says, imagine 30x growth. Number one, if you can imagine, which I talk about in my six pillars, which I reset the mindset with, what's your big picture? Where do you want to land up the day you decide to leave? What's your Mount Everest? Is it a hut 
is 29,000 feet. That decision is important. And what you don't know, you got to learn. Be it from a six-month-old child or a 60-year-old or a 30-year-old young man who has energy. So my question to you is, let go this resistance. Learning does not come to people who say, I know. Yeah. And those leaders have no business to stay who say, I know. And they ask you, what do you know, sir? A 26, 27 year old asked me, sir, give me what will you speak? I said, but you have to say, what will you say? What will you say? What will you say? What will you say? You know what? I am ashamed to say that, but the HR head said, check with this. We need to tick these boxes, which is not correct. Learning is not about ticking boxes. The other day, somebody rang me up. He said, sir, we want to take them out for a picnic and we want to motivate them with a one hour session. I said, don't call me. Don't call me. Let them enjoy. You can't motivate people when they are on a picnic. Hmm. We want to teach them something, do a session so that they can learn, absorb, and then recreate. So I'm sorry to say, those leaders who do the tick the boxes are not doing the right job. Those who want to create growth had to reshape the way they look at coaching, mentoring, teaching, training. It's not a one-off business. It's my mission to see my company grow. It's my culture to see my people absorb into the culture. And if I can do it, you can do it too. It starts from the owner. His habits, if he comes at 12 o'clock, everybody will pick up his pen at 12.05. They will not start at 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock. Yeah. We don't have a culture. If people respect because they have ownership for the job, they'll come at 6 a.m. and do the job. And it is their ownership that they do the job. Most of the people live below that line. I call it BED. People sleep on the bed, right? Yeah. Blame, excuse, denial. Oh. This is where they live. Why do they live there? Why don't they live above that point of power? Which is OAR. You must have heard we had the, the chappu for driving our boat in life. Yeah. We call it the oar. Mm -hmm. When you keep your oar on your shoulders, ownership, accountability, and responsibility. Three key words. Ownership, accountability, responsibility of your words, of your thoughts, of your actions, and of your results. In every aspect of what you do. See how life changes. You're so powerful. When you say, do and get the desired results. Yeah. Or you're sleeping on the bed. I don't know. The power of these three words changes the game. And that's why I say 24 by 7 positive mental attitude, enthusiasm, and discipline. I teach the 17 principles of success by Clement Stone. And these are three major principles which I talk about. So there is a lot to share, a lot to give, and a lot to have these people create this new habit and die the old habit. You know, habits don't die. Yeah. half your life you create bad habits and half your life you live those bad habits so I am the person who cuts those 
remove the bad and ugly in you and drown them in the ocean the nearest to your home and start living good habits and finally make an impact in the lives of people good becomes great by working hard on yourself and i speak this one line the quality of your routine determines the caliber of your performance the quality of your routine determines the caliber of your performance and if the quality of your 6 am to 11 pm is great you have to be great and when you write your tomorrow tonight we call the daily default diary you have it captured with you and you have the right to say i have greatness within me i have something special within me. yeah all this has to come you deserve it it's a process and if you don't do it i'm sorry leaders excuse me pardon me enjoy you can shake those glasses every day and show your pictures on all the social media rather than show them what you taught them what you made them and what you made them become honestly i can give you 13 episodes on the whole process of becoming good to great mm-hmm. i have invested 12 years of my life i have invested more than 150000 dollars on myself why to be the good to great in the journey and unless you leave your bad and ugly you cannot become good and great so i want to respect all the leaders and ask them move towards this the earlier you move the earlier you get everything i was late in the journey 52 people half my age need to join and become leaders so that by the time they reach my age they are already world renowned leaders so invest in yourself with the key area invest in learning invest in growing invest in caring invest in sharing and invest in creating a community of people who love each other and the more you give the more you have wonderful sir the learning organizations are always leading organization and there are two attitudes one is idk i don't know and another one is aka i know all so move out of from aka to i don't know you know you always always open the door of opportunity for your own learning and the learning for your own people in which these practices the coaching mentoring uh, training uh, these these are just like i always used to tell people that this is just like a ayurvedic drug it will it will cure the root cause not as a you know the just simply giving paracetamol and reduces the fever for 4 hours so always you know think from this perspective the impact may not be visible in one session maybe two session this may require continuous maybe six session or maybe 12 session we do not know the scenario as you said very rightly the culture the practices of the people the habits of the people the most difficult thing in the life is to change the habit of the people and where the role of a of a coach where the role of a mentor really plays a very very important role in making them realize this is what you need to change if this will move the needle from here to there now uh, this is similar to the frog story the frog is kept there in the vessel and the, they put up put on the stove the water is keep on heating up so realize it you know when you are there when everything is fine so that will help your people also to realize thank you so much sir for bringing this many insights kindly share some of the resources for the leaders and for the current coaches we have you know the large community of coaches in india those who go and conduct session in india and abroad also few inventory sir which you feel is really very much important for any leader or for coaches sir there are tools available by the mile and you can take bags full of tools i emphasize because today i teach 90% is mindset 
Ten percent is strategy and execution. If you can set this in order, the will, the burning desire, will shape up. So, when you get into that zone of committing, agreeing with yourself, I need to do this tomorrow. Or else I am not there. That attitude is to be created. I know I am speaking idealistic because you can't be a coach unless you are a given. Yeah. Unless you give something special, people don't value you. I don't talk about those things which people know already. I. Need to attend to their gaps. Remember, everybody is good. Everybody needs to become great. Do we identify the gaps? And Pankaj, remember one word: behaviors don't lie. They speak before you speak. Before you open your mouth, before you speak the first thirty words, I know where you come from. The words you choose to share, your name, and who you are. Why should people care? Have you ever realized this? If you have good, the good will be there every single time. The words you choose, the thoughts you stitch, the actions you take, the results you get. You choose the appropriate words, and words are power. Remember. Then people ask me, "Sir, do you have a PPT?" I said, "This is the PPT, and I can speak for nine hours." I need to be sure that my people are absorbing it. I make them write. I make them do. So, my friends who are in the business of coaching, ask yourself what would give you happiness, joy, when the people you are coaching. What would give you happiness and joy? When the people you are coaching, whether it's one hour, thirty minutes, or keynote, or whatever you give, do they give you a standing ovation by understanding and accepting? Guru loved it. That means they took something out of it. One, two, three, which they would like to practice. If you can create that environment. And help them do that. Yeah. Today in the morning, I shared with these people. I said five things I want you to remove from your life. Stop complaining. Stop criticizing. Stop gossiping. Stop worrying. And stop procrastinating. And do it week on week. So five weeks, if you can practice it, look at the change you can bring. The other side, how to move from scarcity to abundance. I am confident. I am fearless. I am unstoppable. I am limitless, and I am the best. Say that every day for the next six months and see the change. And finally, I believe in myself, and I do everything that I need to do to get the desired results. It's not a want; it's a desire. Desire is having energy, and it's all about energy. So we say energy is everything. Everything is energy. So war has to change. I need to move from desire to burning desire every single day. Then only you can break those walls and fulfill your goal. The rest is all 
ordinary. And bugger, there are too many ordinary people. Just do that extra. 24 by 7 positive mental attitude, self-discipline and enthusiasm. Live this life and write your tomorrows tonight, your daily default diary. Time is limited for everybody and do it in the mind during your sleep, the conscious and the subconscious. Everything is doable and stop saying I can't. I've never done it. Possible. Yeah. Stop using these words if and but can't, won't, however, and start using the word, I can, I will, I must. Look at the play that you can do with your mind. Why do people say, I've never done it? So do it. What stops you from saying, I am going to do it today, now. Look at this boy who went. He said, first match I'm going to play, I'm going to score a century. Get me out if you can. Mm -hmm. If poor people can think about it, what stops you and me to think about it? Just because he is a Belpuri wala's son? Just because he slept under a tent? Just because he has... So these stories are made from ordinary people who become extraordinary. And today they deserve those riches. So... A story is a great story if you have created something out of nothing. So LND, CHRO, create great leaders by asking them yeah. and giving them the freeway, the leverage to become the leader they were born to be. And get out of your role of attendance, PF, gratitude, leave, that's all. That's no more the role of an HR or a CHRO. Get yeah. beyond that. First learn, then create and teach and create future leaders. Create CEOs, let me say. Let this be the new normal. I'm giving a small message. Let this yeah. be the new normal. Create CEOs. That's a new job of HR, CHR, or learning and development. I feel and you are, I, as a coach, mentor, I'm willing to participate yeah. in the journey. You are you are giving very very you know big message and the very vast you know the insight here that HR do not only look for your you know, your your payroll, your attendance, your leave, your other things, regulatory things come beyond this and think from the other perspective to really transform the business and that's possible when you really impact the leaders when you really create more leaders right so uh, not thinking about the small all these nitty-gritty things comes out of you know all those the limited arena of thinking and then think bigger think big and you have a bigger responsibility to transform the organization take help from people now the another understanding and the mindset is nothing wrong in taking people nothing wrong in asking them can you help us and don't think about everything that you can do everything you can become all the you know champions for everything there are people around very rightly said sir and uh, i feel that this uh, message by you will be very helpful for all of our young leaders especially hr leaders and the all current leaders like ceos in the organization to build invest in people is the only formula yeah. yeah. Invest in the right people is the criteria. Mm. Don't say go and attend the seminar. Don't push him into that. You know, I would recruit a person and ask him, how do you want to serve and create this a mammoth organization? Let him create. Because dreams will lead to come on force. Without dreams, you can't build organizations. And these young people have got big dreams. And please address those dreams. Challenge them. They have the energy. And get out of their space. Permit them to move. Don't say report to me. Done. Over with that. You know, having been on that side, I know. I know. 
Even today, I met a couple of banks, general managers, and CHROs, and all. They don't move. Proposal, send do. So, I will send you that. What is the proposal? Send do. If you are ready, commit. I give you the price, and I'll give you the results. Period. Gone are those days. Pankaj, if you don't change, people will throw you out sooner than later. Decision making is like this, now or never. You chose to speak to me, right? Yeah. You, I didn't ask why. I said I'm ready. And this is my third one-hour session since yeah. morning. And I'm more full of energy than I ever was. So it's the power of giving. And unless what you have learned, you share and care, this needs to grow leaps and bounds. I'm prepared to share everything that you want to ask me. I promise you. You can create three episodes out of it. Doesn't matter. No. I'm in full flow today. And if you choose to have me live, decide. If you want me to be talking to panelists, I can talk. God has gifted me this power now. Yeah. You see, I don't need a cue sheet also. Hmm. The words is God's gift, and they flow beautifully. I am empowered, and I'm willing to share this with people who deserve this. I want to create great leaders in the future who have a learning bent, not this. Learning is an attitude. I'm telling you, an attitude of gratitude. Every single day, I am grateful to those people who made me the person I have become in the last twelve years. I would have remained ordinary. Yeah. Today, I am extraordinary because I speak a different language. Wonderful, sir. Uh, one thing you know, I can uh, I can see uh, you speak. uh with lot of energy lot of passion you speak from the your heart and uh, because i i feel that this is now becoming a part of your your dna i should say right which comes within and this is something you know when you say that the words are automatically keep on coming the way you fabricate each and every sentence every sentence flow with the energy i i remember there is a book in sanskrit that is called the shabd shakti Now uh, the way you said that that each word you speak, the selection of the words speaks first few seconds and the minutes. It means that the first ten sentences and and this each and every word carries energy. The way you talk to the people and that has a power to influence people, one and all. Right. See, you asked me, abundant Harish Mehta. So when I say, I said I am abundant Harish Mehta. Abundance is the game I play. with current and future leaders making them become abundant in this life and create future leaders who are also abundant period this is a strong message and abundance does not come easily i don't ask i only give Can you believe that? I went to buy this shirt yesterday. I said, "How much?" He said, "So much." I said, "Take my card." It doesn't come to me. Jada hai, kam hai, thoda hai. That attitude is gone. I buy two fruits. How much? You see the difference? Yeah. It's an attitude of gratitude. and people i'm so sorry to say they go for anas bananas 50 paisa 100 rupee kam kar de ye kar de who are you penalizing the poor you can't talk to the rich no 
don't charge me 9900 for this charge me 4500 you can't do that so where are you living pankaj bangalore bulao ek jalwa karte hain aapke sath sure sure 100 aadmi ko bulao 50 ko bulao ek jalwa kar let this magic spread yeah sure i will share with you how i uproot the current mindset and reroute the desired mindset the six pillars aur ek pillar gaadne mein pehle ukhadne mein fir gaadne mein vakt lagta hai and wonderful. everything is energy and energy is everything yeah wonderful so uh, this is becoming a brain tattoo brain tattoo for uh, everything is energy and energy is everything and i feel that all over you know the viewers must learn this so many messages so many so much of energy you know so this is a power packed one hour session i would say more than any you know bigger than any motivational session what they can watch online and uh, any last message uh, harish sir you would like to share with our viewers i want to give only one message start today start now don't wait for tomorrow to come kal ho na ho if the change has to come after listening hmm. take the notes and decide 1 2 3 1 2 3 these are the things i need to implement and if they need to know more connect with me if they need to be coached connect with me invest in learning and growing and remember the fundamental the more you learn the more you earn is fundamental bagar you won't believe i didn't know till i got 2000 dollars for a one hour keynote and now i know the value is 83 rupees so when you give that value to people and you sign up for 24 weeks hmm. you know the value of an hour so my friends listening to me you have to create value for yourself for people to see the dollar in you and i am not from the community of that 99999 i'm not from that community yeah i shift people's minds i challenge them i uproot them uproot is a bigger task reroute is easier you dig a hole and reroute but uproot is so many years you have been there i am uprooting from your roots yeah that is the challenge so give me leadership who wants to be uprooted and yeah. rebooted to get the 30x results i will accept them take them create them Six months, nine months, twelve months. There'll be initially a lot of resistance, especially fifty-five and plus. The lower will see the difference, yeah, and they'll be happy and ready. And I'm happy and ready to serve for the next ten years beautifully, yeah, and thereafter at my ease. and i travel globally so travel is not yeah it's a one night journey yeah. wonderful uh, sir thank you so much for taking out time for this wonderful podcast on let's talk show uh, we would love to connect again for some more important areas of coaching the process of coaching method of coaching what really differentiate compared to teaching and training because coaching is something of very very yes <laughs> yeah I did not speak on that because the power of questions yeah is the ability of the coach all those hidden years of hiding comes out when I do my one to one coaching with CEOs 
all the pains the sufferings have to come out so coaching is a process where you unearth once you build that connect with the coach and when you ask those questions <coughs> sorry when you ask those questions the coach is more than happy to relieve himself and they are all there for a period of time personal professional relationships all types of it's all about feelings yeah and a coach is your buddy a trainer is not your buddy he'll come and make you do this and go a coach is your buddy he there with you for 6 months 12 months life and he travels with you he corrects you on the go on the fly he is a part of your inside outside it's a different relationship mm. and i love this especially with ceos mds and number one where do they go to to share their inside out yeah so coaching ceos leaders is my prime job which i do get them to create and live the life they were born to live not the life they are living today under duress under stress and unable to communicate be it their wife be it their children be it the people in the work be it the stakeholders so i can do a total overall 360 yeah because i am passionate so yeah. i must share here my last word yeah speaking is one which is passion coaching is two which is my purpose and three changing people is my power so the three p's passion purpose and power to take people especially leaders to their fourth p potential no oh, very nice so i know each one is born with a potential some people live it some people die it with it carrying that if they in the graveyard so my one line is get hold of your potential learn from the best and have a coach personal development coach a business development coach a leadership development coach an organization excellent development coach if the indian team wants to be number one in the world in cricket they have it and they pay them very well it's a investment coaching is an investment remember branding and coaching are the same words i have a guru ron kaufman in singapore he has changed the way singapore airlines is how to uplift your service i have a guru in marshall goldsmith so these gurus have taught me some great things and i am happy to transfer it to you are you ready if you are ready give me a shout i am there to serve you to help you to make you become in this life the person you are born to be and remember you were a brand the way you were given a name by your parents so live up to your brand live it up very nice thank you so much sir and uh, 
love to meet you in person in uh, bangalore or mumbai if i am around in mumbai love to find it out the time and uh, catch up with you